Hey guys, welcome back to MTG Eternal. Let's dive back into lore of a Johnny Goldmane with part 3. Then they traveled from the Nisian forest to the Siren shipyard in search of Kalefi, the Mariner. Kalefi was a mortal who was chosen by Thassa, god of the sea, to be her champion and demigod. Standing in the middle of wreckage of ships, a Johnny summoned the legendary sunken ship, the Monsoon. Kalefi appears as the Monsoon, her ship, rose from the deep. Little did they know this was an imposter. Kiora, the merfolk planeswalker, had disguised herself as Kalefi in order to pursue her own goals to gain power. She was revealed to be Kiora when she led Ajani and Elzba to the sunken city of Eryxmethes, which turned out to be a large kraken that a city was built on top of. Thassa would not let Kiora take this kraken from her, but before they fought, Thassa led Ajani and Elzbeth on the correct path and wished them luck. Kiora and the God of the Sea fought in a battle full of sea monsters and ended with Kiora mostly unharmed. She ended up walking away with Thassa's bident, Dekela. After walking the path that Thassa put them on, they finally arrived at the edge of the world, where Krufix allowed them to go through the gateway of Nithgos, the Shrine of Nyx. In order to be granted access to Nyx, either Ajani or Elsbeth had to undergo an ordeal sent from the gods. Ajani tried to get Elsbeth to take Thassa's ordeal, but instead she decided on Erebos, god of the dead. He told her she was a fool, but they still went through with it. They met Xenagos, the satyr god of rebels, and fought him until Elsbeth finally took him down. The fight took a toll on the two. Nylia, god of the hunt, warned them that they must escape before Erebos or Heliod, god of the sun, finds them. They almost escaped, but Heliod grabbed Elsbeth's weapon, Godson, and murdered her with it. Ajani grabbed her and took her back to Theros. He prepared to fight off Erebos' henchmen that were coming to claim his dying friend. But instead, Bramaz's soldiers ambushed him. They pulled him away from Elsbeth for his own good as the agents of Erebos took her away. Ajani woke back up in Tethmos as the Leonin were healing him. After practicing his skills against Bramaz, he decided that he now needs something to fight for. With his anger towards Heliod for striking down his friend Elsbeth, he decided to make people stop believing in Heliod. He traveled to Heliod's temple in Miletus and tells the people about how Heliod murdered Elsbeth. He tried to get the people there to turn away from the gods, and then he returned to Oreskos. There he told Brimaz and all of the Leonin that were present that the gods are creation of belief. He earned his place with the Leonin in Theros with this message and decided to wear Elsbeth's cloak to honor his dear friend. Putting his faith in his word and that it would do his bidding while he was gone, he left Theros. He planeswalked from Kamigawa to the house of his old friend Tamiyo, the moonfolk planeswalker from Kamigawa. Ajani stayed with his friend to further mourn Elsbeth and heal. While he stayed on Kamigawa, he learned of Tezzeret's infinite consortium on Kamigawa. Tezzeret is a human planeswalker who specializes in artifacts and was born on the Esper Shard of Alara. He also told Tamio that Elsbeth saw Tezzeret alive on New Phyrexia, a metal plane that was originally created as the Plane Argentum by Karn, the Silver Golem Planeswalker. Ajani prepared to track Tezzeret down and bring him to justice. After a month of searching, he found out that Tezzeret is on Kaladesh, a plane known for its artificers and large amounts of Aether energy, an energy that is present within the Blind Eternities. While on Kaladesh, Ajani made contact with the Renegades, Renegade Prime, and Ovia Pashiri. The Renegades believed that the Consulate was trying to consolidate their hold over the technology in Kaladesh for their own personal gains. They also believed that the Consulate was infringing upon their freedoms. Ajani traveled to Ovia's home, but to his surprise, Ovia had been taken into custody for being a Renegade. Ajani met with a Renegade agent. Shadowblade, and Elven Lifesmith. During this, he learned that Renegade Prime had been captured and that Tezzeret was involved. The Renegades tracked Ovia to the Dunt, where Ajani found a cell filled with poisonous gas. He scared the guardsmen away and forced the chamber door open. There he found Ovia, Nisa, the Elven Planeswalker from Zendikar, and Chandra, the Human Planeswalker from Kaladesh. 
the group quickly left before any more guards could get there. During this time, the consulate crackdown occurred. This was when all inventions and artifacts that had not been consulate approved or had been modified for personal use were taken into custody. This meant to be a safety measure against the renegade factions that would exploit those inventions and artifacts. After this event, Ajani continued to aid the renegades. After Chandra and Baral's duel in the streets of Giripur, he healed Ovia and Chandra of their injuries since they both had been critically injured during the fight. After the renegades became victorious over the corrupt consulate and brought about a more benevolent one, Ajani was welcomed into the Gatewatch. The Gatewatch is a group of powerful planeswalkers who swear an oath to protect the people of the multiverse from threats that no one else can. Ajani took his oath to protect the innocent from tyrants and help all beings find their place. Although he may have just joined them, after hearing about their plans to now immediately confront Nicobolus in the plain of Amonkhet, he strongly objects. He tried to convince them to wait and gain more allies before confronting Bolus, knowing just how strong Bolus truly is and what damage may follow suit. Ajani asked his new allies to regroup on Dominaria. Then they recruited Joira and her weatherlight crew to help them. After learning that only Gideon and Liliana had arrived because they were distracted by their fight against Belzenlock, an elder demon, Ajani set out to recruit more planeswalkers for the fight. Thanks for tuning in for part 3 of Ajani's lore. We had a lot going on in this episode. From Elzbeth's death and seeing where Ajani's iconic white cloak came from, to Ajani joining the Gatewatch. We learned a lot about our favorite Leonin Planeswalker. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment what character you want to learn more about in a lore video. I will see you in the next video, and again, thanks for watching MTG Eternal.